Now we'll take a look at the NNXT. The NNXT has all the features of the NN19, but a lot more. When you first load an NNXT into your rack, you just see this upper area where you have some global controls. But if I click the arrow here, I get access to all the innards of the NNXT. Like the NN19, you can bring in a patch with all of its settings and audio files. And you can see this grand piano has many, many settings, many audio files, each with its own zone spread across different parts of the keyboard. Now there are a few notable differences between the NNXT and the NN19. Let's initialize this patch and I'll show you some. The first difference is that every zone can have its own settings. So in order to show you that, let me load in a new batch of samples. We'll go to our Reason Factory Bank, and let's load in some electric piano samples. These look like they were recorded at a velocity of 81. Again, I can tell that from the name. And every one has been mapped across the entire keyboard. So we can do auto mapping here, just like we could with the NN19. It's always a good idea, though, to first choose set root notes from pitch detection. Sometimes it will not find the root note from the audio file name. So that works really well. That's set root note from pitch detection. And then we'll auto map the zones. And as you'll see, the zones are spread across the keyboard. I can select one or more zones. I can drag the endpoints and I can change parameters for every zone. All of the parameters down below will affect a single zone unless I have more than one zone selected. So let me just select one of these zones, and then we'll find some parameters to change for this particular zone. Maybe the pitch, maybe the envelopes, maybe an LFO. It's always a good idea to turn on Select Zone via MIDI so we make sure we're working with the correct zone. So I'm selecting it from my keyboard, and now I'm going to turn up the LFO just for that zone. It's an extreme example, but it will illustrate my point. If I play other zones, everything sounds fine. And then you can hear this zone has been changed. So I'll undo that. So when each zone has its own settings, you have tremendous power in building your sampled instruments. Now a second change from the NN19 is that we can have multiple samples triggering in the same zone so we can layer our audio files. Let's now bring in some strings. We'll select all of these. And once again, I'll use my context menu to set the root key, which it will do for each zone. And then I'll auto map these violin samples. and you'll see how they're spread across the keyboard. So we're hearing both the violin sample and the electric piano sample. That's called layering. Now let me drag across these violin samples and we'll define something called a group. I simply choose from my context menu, group selected zones and I can select the groups by clicking in the very left-hand column, the column with the G in it. That selects all the samples in that group, and then I can change all the parameters for that group together. I can even have some specific parameters up here for the group. So let's layer in these violin samples by velocity. In other words, I only want them to trigger when the velocity gets to a certain level. So I will select the group, and then change my low velocity up to 93. And now what will happen is when I play a key softly, only the electric piano will trigger. If I play louder than velocity 93, both samples will trigger. So that's how easy it is to do velocity layering. And of course you could do this with more than two groups if you wanted to. There are ways of setting up crossfading between different samples and setting fades to help smooth out velocity changes. And remember, all of these parameters can be changed at a zone level or at a group level.
And that's the NNXT.